current role in the fashion industry is a magazine editor, so I'm the editorial director of a luxury lifestyle magazine called Hashtag Legend. We overlook all the luxury lifestyle categories, but specifically we have a large focus on fashion. So what that means for fashion in particular is that every month we shoot um, different editorial shoots, we also do celebrity shoots for our front covers, for our inside covers, and that requires styling and photography, and then we also do features. People say print is dead, but I love like every single month getting my subscription. And then from there it was blogs, and then there's Instagram, and there's Pinterest, and then there's looking around the street, and then there's the increased culture. Hong Kong has a lot of local designers, so um, meeting them also kind of keeps me in the loop and, and kind of understanding what's on designers' minds and what's on other people's minds, which helps my job. I actually love the fashion scene in Hong Kong and their de designers like Yat Pit. In Chinese, they're called Yat Pit. Um, and they're two designers, Anying and Jason, who have worked really hard um, alongside their full-time jobs as, I think they used to be a visual merchandiser and an in-house designer separately uh, for different brands. And they were working on this together as a side project and a lot of their clothes are inspired by what they see in Shamshui Po. Their design studio used to be in Shamshui Po. And a lot of the elements are drawn from Hong Kong. So they have this beautiful skirt that's oil painted by hand. Um, there's just a lot from them. I really like Yan Yan Knits. The designers for that used to work at Rag and & Bone and they came back to Hong Kong and decided to make sort of knitwear. Um, based on Chinese culture as well. I really enjoy it when people really embrace Chinese culture because when I was young there was a lot of looking to the West and looking abroad for inspiration and everybody wanted to be like a laya and on couture but actually there's a lot of our own culture to mine and a lot of people I think are coming back and seeing the beauty of Hong Kong and that's what I really appreciate. So when I do a fashion shoot, a lot of things come into play, especially for a magazine. We think of like what we want to talk about that month. So I think I really like Chinese inspired things. So I think even if I were to show an example, it would be like from February, a Chinese New Year shoot. But how do we do a Chinese New Year shoot that doesn't make it kitschy or too run of the mill and boring? So we try to think of different stories like legends that we can pull from. So I think the research before is onto different sort of mood boards, storyboards, like how I want it to look, what's the feel of it, um, and kind of the story that we want to tell or the feeling that we want to give. And then after that, it's looking at the clothes. Um, once we settle in, we talk together, like here's my idea, what's your idea, how do you think you're gonna be able to do it, what are the lights like, what model do we think works best? So we've had like long discussions before on like what model um, people prefer. So sometimes we like try and find some budget to have a middle ground and get both. Or sometimes we all decide, okay, this look is the best and it's, it's smooth sailing from there. But then of course, then once you get onto set, right? Once you start taking the pictures, something completely different can come out of it. So it really is having an open mind, but also having the right parameters to see that, okay, here is my general guideline, but being open-minded enough to let like the magic of a shoot happen so that something new, something really creative, something really different can happen on set, on the day. I think it's trying to make friends that are in the industry, right? So that people know that you're interested and that you want to do this sort of thing. Make sure that like all your social media sort of speaks to this sort of thing, like so that we understand if you do come for an internship, say, then we know, oh, you're interested in this style. Oh, you're interested in fashion styling. Oh, you're interested in maybe a different aspect. And I think a point of view is very important. It's no longer the case that like, oh, maybe somebody likes this trend and you have to follow it all the way. It's more like, how do you interpret this trend or how do you interpret this kind of work for your own? Before maybe you get an internship or while you're still in school studying, try and think of what it is that you really like about fashion. Is it that you like French styling? Is it that you like Chinese images? I for sure know that I love these Chinese directed images and I really want to understand how to make it my own. So that's sort of my own personal project, even, even though now I'm, I'm already working in, in this role. So I think it's really important to start early on 
to have that kind of visual and aesthetic identity and that philosophy, right? Your own philosophy and your own take.